You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. Time, weather, and... Hi, friends. Welcome back to the Rachel LaFour Show. I don't know why, sorry, all of a sudden I started talking to the camera and to you all as though this was, I was being held against my will. I don't know why all of a sudden I was just like, uh, hi. Hi, guys. How are you? Rachel LaFour reporting live. <sighs> How are we? How are we? How are we? Let's sink in. This is the beginning of a two part episode. Building off of the current energy, building off of the last few episodes from the Fit and Famous episode on. So I think you have about one, two, three, maybe this is the four four or five episode run of all of these skills. And this is all gearing towards your transformation, right? So we're all collectively, we're going on this journey. I said that we've got about 20 months. Uh, you know, 21, 20 months to come into this full transformation of our story. Right. And I think some of the things that are going to be the most helpful as you are expanding is going to be your stress management. Okay. Because here's the deal. Everybody thinks they want to be rich and famous. Oh, everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants. And again, you might be going, I don't Rachel. I'm talking loosely of the idea that everybody seeks a big life or glamour or even like the things that you think that you want. Um, and then sometimes you get them and when you're experiencing them and you're like, oh, this is not at all what I thought it was going to be, right? Like you were like, all right, I've been building this business and now I'm really ready for like, you know, the floodgates to open and for everybody to come in. And then all these people show up and you're like, oh, holy shit, the back end of my business that I thought was really thriving is not at all supporting what it is that we need to be able to support the influx of this many people. The outreach that we have is not sufficient. The So anytime you are adjusting your systems, anytime that you are in a place of expansion, we're going to have to look at your actual systems or how are you doing things. But beyond that is your capacity to handle stress. Okay. Now, shocker, I'm not a stress expert outside of surviving a lot of it. Okay. Um, but so are you because you're a human on earth. Why I've broken this down into two parts is I think that there needs to be a lot of digestion time in between episodes in order for you to actually begin to look at how does that permeate your life and what can you do differently to create a new relationship to stress within your body, mind, and soul, okay? Because so many people I know, they're like, oh no, I'm so good at compartmentalizing. I'm so good at compartmentalizing. Great. Maybe mentally, that's not, that doesn't have anything to do with your energetic field. How is that affecting you energetically? How is it affecting your relationships? How is that affecting your physical body? Right? So we really want to get good at deepening our capacity for stress. You guys have heard me say that over and over and over again on this podcast. And what can I just say a fucking beautiful thing y'all that the season of life I'm in now is so beautiful and so abundant and expanding at a rate that is a little hard for me to process day to day, right? Because it, frankly, it feels so beautiful. Even the challenges feel so beautiful. Cause I'm like, fuck yeah, man, like we can handle this. Like we can do it. Um, and the only reason that I'm able to surf this, this season of my life is because I was so acutely aware from the time when I was, got pregnant with Teddy until now, and he's 18, 18 months. So 18 plus nine, you do the math, right? That entire time, I mean, even long before that, but that was when I got conscious of it, where I was like, the amount of things that I'm trying to do right now, and I know that I could do them. I knew that I could 
work through my pregnancy and, you know, uh, what did we do? We, uh, renovated our home and take care of Ted. Jonah was still just a little, little guy and, you know, building my one-on-ones and re, you know, just all of these things that I did. And I always like to be clear that living a big life, because I think often there's so much talk now about like slow living and attention and intention. And I think that what I love about my life and what I love to share with all of you is I think that there's a balance. I think there's a way to live big, to have a big full life and hold on to the principle, the principles of slow living, hold on to the principles of family first, hold on to like, I think that there is a way to do both. I really do. And it's not an attempt of like, you know, Oh, we can have everything we want, but I think that's what abundance means, right? Like if you go and you look at beautiful gardens, they didn't just plant one type of flower, right? There's all sorts of flowers that they've planted in this space and they've been able to grow and cultivate and and do that together in one space. And I think that abundantly we are able to do that in our own lives, but it takes skill. It takes a very skill for, skillful gardener to be able to do that in our own lives, right? Uh, mixing metaphors. Welcome to the Rachel Force Show. So in order to have this fully abundant life and stay present for the other aspects of your life, perhaps that's children, perhaps that's dating, um, mourning the loss of a parent or loved one, uh, there's going to be a lot of different things that may be happening, getting out of debt, saving money, going back to school, um, starting a business that are really going to take kind of the bulk of your energy and attention. And so we have to get really good at discerning what aspect of my life is, you know, gold, silver, bronze. And that's always going to be rotating and changing. So there's a few of these systems that we're going to be talking about over the next two episodes. Uh, frameworks for living. Honestly, it could be an online course and I'm giving it to you for free in two episodes. You're welcome. She's out here doing God's work. So the the first part of this is we need to get aware of what is the framework of your life now? Okay. So it's your first uh, journal prompt question. What is the framework of your life now? I'm going to give you mine so that you can understand the scope and the breadth of what I'm asking you to do. Okay. Uh, I am a mother. I'm a wife. I am a multiple business owner. I am a creative. I am a boss. I am a daughter. I am a friend. I'm a community member. Okay. Those are probably my, my big, I may be forgetting a few, but those, those are my biggies. Okay. That is the kind of the framework of how, you know, my identity in a lot of people's lives. Um, now I have two littles. Um, and so that's kind of the bulk. That's the center of what needs my attention and love. Okay. My relationship, nurturing that with my husband, that's at the center of my kind of nucleus of my life. Um, and then, so really, if, even if you're, um, writing this out or for me, I like to draw, you can kind of draw that nucleus as it gets bigger and what that kind of cell of your overall life looks like. Okay. Um, and then, so as you go out from what your immediate is, then outside of that, then I'm going to have creative entrepreneur, right? And some of that work I share with my husband. So the comedy club, the studio, those I share uh, with my husband. And then I'm going to have the aspects of my podcast, speaking engagements, comedy, and one-on-one. -on -one. That's everything uh, that is, is mine, right? And then you're going to go out from that. And then I've got my extended family and friends. And then outside of that, I'm going to have community, um, whether that's the artistic community, comedy community, the community of the families and friends from my um, son's schools. And that's really like, okay, that's kind of the overall um, world of Rachel LaForce. Okay. Now the framework of it is going to be, what is kind of my day to day, right? If you got uh, 24 hours in a day, what does the majority of that time look like it's going to? All right. And then you'll kind of have an idea of what the framework is. Where is your time and energy going right now? All right. Next week, we will talk about what do we want it to look like? How do we, you know, all of those things. But right now I want us to look at what is the brass tax of your life right now? And 
this is where I need you to pull out a red Sharpie, a highlighter, your glitter gel pen. Like we're going in. Okay. This is like emotional operation. Do you understand? I need you to get clear on where are you giving in distress, wasting your energy? Where are, where are the leaks? Okay. And this is when, again, that true honesty comes from, are you saying yes to too many kids' birthday parties? You burning yourself out trying to get to all these kids' birthday parties? They don't miss you. They're not going to miss you. Okay. Like where are the aspects for you that like, where are you tripping yourself up? Where are you giving in to things that don't need your time and energy? Okay. That's the first part. The second part is where do you feel the, the points of stress? So I feel the points of stress for me in the morning because that's okay. Everybody's got to be out the door by a certain time. And I got a two different drop off times at two different schools. And if it's a day that I need to be here and makeup ready, okay, I need to give myself enough time. Did I mornings are a point of stress. Okay. So I kind of want to circle that. All right. That's something to come back to. That's something to think about. Um, what are, maybe there are other points of stress where I have a point of stress where like, I wish I saw my friends more right now. Seeing my friends is not stressful, but holding that energy all the time of like, Oh, I wish I saw my friends more. Oh, I wish I saw my friends more. Oh, I wish where are all of these pockets of stress or time for you? Maybe it's, you're trying to get out of debt. Um, but what are the simple things that you keep spending money on that no matter how hard you try, you keep finding yourself going through the Starbucks drive through and you're like, okay, well there went another set, you know, seven twenty five that you've told yourself for a long time. It's not a big deal. Cause it's only seven twenty five. Great. But if you're trying to get out of debt and you do that seven twenty five, three, let's be truthful four times a week. I see you. Okay. I've been you. That's a lot of money. Okay. So we're wanting to look at what is the stress that we're dealing with now, okay? If there are, are you in mourning? Are you going through a breakup? Are you knowing that you need to go through a breakup? Where are these emotional cages? Where are these emotional cages for you that exist? And where is all of that stress going? Where is all of that? This is what we're looking at is where are all of the places in the whole framework of your life that are either causing stress or points of contention, okay? Because when we are not aware of the stress that either exists or the way in which we create stress for ourselves, there is no stress management because we are unconscious to what already exists in our life, okay? So hold on. Sorry. So many thoughts at once. Um, that is what that's going to kind of like bookend this podcast episode. I'm going to, I'm going to chat for a minute about and around that, but that's really the bulk of it of, I want you to sit over the next week or whenever it is that you listen to this and really get clear on that so that next week we are going to talk about how to move out of that framework into this new framework that is going to support what it is that you're wanting, how you're wanting to lead your life, right? Like, obviously, the way I lead my life, my stress management is wildly different as Rachel in 2024 than it was when Rachel got sober in 2018, okay? So that framework, that ability to manage stress and frankly eliminate it has been almost a seven-year process, right? So that's why this transformation journey that I'm going on of this 2021 months is about locking in and integrating this new story for myself. And the way that I was able to move through those seven years was from continuing to deepen my capacity for stress. And what I mean by that is so often, as I always define it, like you don't have to go for every ball, meaning every not so nice comment somebody leaves on your social or every side comment that your sister-in-law says, every, you know, you're co-parenting with somebody and they want to change weekends, even though they get frustrated with you when you try to change weekends, like all the shit, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. 
that piles up, we have to learn to be stronger than that, period. I'm not saying that things and negative people don't affect, like, I'm not saying we're going to somehow be subhuman. That's not what I'm saying, or superhuman. But you do, I'm going to be frank with you, you do have to develop the skill to fuck it and let it fly, okay? You Quote it, all right? Fuck it and let it fly. There has to be a percentage of things in your life that you say fuck it and let it fly because we can't go for every ball. I don't have time to be running out in the outfield with everybody else trying to fix everybody else's problems. I got shit to do. You have shit to do, okay? So we need to get super clear now of what is the framework for your life now? Now, also, you may be similar to me where the framework for your life, that nucleus, that nucleus for your life is about as top notch. It's about as quote unquote clean as we could get it for this next phase of life. Great. That's great. Okay. So I don't want you to feel like you've got to find issues if there aren't any, right? You may be looking at a new playbook. Okay. But If you're not, or if it's in transition, this is the perfect opportunity to get crystal clear about that because you've got bigger fish to fry, right? Meaning when I was renovating my house, things are working, things aren't working. I'm pregnant. I got a nap. We're trying to like, when you have that many things going on, you are able to better assess what actually needs your attention and your time. And the shocking thing is friends, you will be almost humiliated at the fact of how little actually needs your attention, truly. How little you really need to stress about. And how many people you're running around wanting to make sure that, uh, oh, you know, everybody's bed has got to be made. Uh Uh-uh. It's not for you. It is not for you, okay? Who is it that relies on you? And I'm talking children, partners, maybe a sick parent, okay? Beyond that, this idea that you got to fix everything for everybody or that you got to, uh, 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 that is all of this energy, all of this, again, that's the stress management. You don't have to go for every ball. So use the next few weeks, uh, especially over this next week, get really clear on what is the framework of your life and is it supporting this transformation and where it is that you're wanting to go, okay? And then next week, we're going to talk more about um, that actual kind of the, um, nuts and bolts of stress management and what does that look like? And kind of, um, and I'll be sharing from my perspective of my life of things where it was like, yeah, we didn't do that anymore. We don't do that anymore. Right. Um, again, that like, fuck it and let it fly. What are the, how are the ways to be able to identify that? And how do we develop this as a practice? Everything is a practice y'all. I mean, that's the thing that I love so much about yoga is that every day, every day, like I show up to yoga every day, but when I show up on my mat is that it's a practice. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't matter, right? Like the instinct is, oh, I got to hold the pose. It's got to be perfect because look at everybody else and we're all looking the same way in the mirror and I got to do it the same way as everybody else. And I feel like that's such a great metaphor for life of that. What is the pose you're up here trying to hold for everybody else to see? It doesn't matter. They're not paying your bills. They're not tucking you in at night. It does not matter. Okay. We need to get good at failing in front of people and not giving a shit because nobody else cares about what we're doing. And anybody who does, they need to have eyes on their own paper, okay? So this is really the practice that we're really going to be working on because people in, and I know not everybody seeks a high position of power, and I'm saying that very loosely, okay? But when you are seeking an audience, when you are seeking a community, when you are seeking to be that leader, and I think there are a lot of leaders in this space, even if that means being the leader of your family, you don't have time to run around being concerned with everybody else. We have to deepen our capacity to handle stress. We have to deepen our capacity to be okay to not be liked. We have to deepen our capacity to understand and make executive decisions. What is it that needs your attention today and what is just not going to get done? And then what's not going to get done and we're not going to fret about it because the sun will rise and we'll do it all over again. And the very real reality is, is that all of this is a process. And that is, I would say, the hardest thing for me about 
all of this. <laughs> Like I'm talking life in general. It's the most beautiful part, but I think it's the part for me that gets a little heady, you know, where it's like, it's always going to be evolving. And as soon as you think that you've gotten to the finish line or that's what it is, like, it's just going to keep moving and, and evolving into the next thing. And the best way for us to show up and be dare I say, an instrument for the divine is just to get out of our own way. And so much of that is going to come from this continual practice of deepening our capacity for stress. And that doesn't mean fearing it or not paying attention to it, but it's it really what it comes down to, friends, is it is deepening your self-trust. So it's the understanding and the unwavering belief that you are made for your mission, that what you are seeking fulfillment through, what it is that you are doing, these are well-laid plans, friends. Like this, this was written in the stars long before you showed up. So we don't have to stress so much about all of the in-betweens and all of the things, right? I always say that all the time, save the bad days for the real bad days, right? The other day, everything we're moving through, my husband was like, this is so hard. You don't feel like this is hard? And I said, well, I just offer you a mindset switch, which is this is not hard. There's just a lot of steps. Hard is caring for a sick parent. Hard is not knowing where the next paycheck is coming from. Hard is, those are hard, right? And some of you may be experiencing those right now. You, even that's another thing. Let's let's use this discernment of what is hard and what is just being in the middle of it. And the more abundance you're wanting to call in, the bigger the audience, the bigger your vision is. This is a non-negotiable, okay? And it's not a skill that I've seen at least that we a readily teach people, which is why you see so many CEOs burn out and or sadly commit suicide or. I think there's a new term that we're using for that. So I apologize, but there, um, uh, people taking their own life, right? Self-harm and every aspect imaginable because we are not sharing and educating on not only the stress of life in general, right? But just the capacity of what it is that A, we're capable and we can do it, that we are capable to handle the ride of which we're on and that that sense of capability only comes from deepening our self-trust that we can manage it and that we can handle it. And lastly, I will leave you with this, that the number one aspect of deepening your capacity to manage stress is knowing when it's too much. Okay. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so excited for the journey that you're on and what it is that you're going to be moving through. Um, I think there's just, there's just so much richness here. And I know that these practices have radically changed my life over the last, you know, 24 months or so. And I'm really excited to continue to do this work alongside you and with you. So go and check out, I'm going to have some spiritual practices on the Substack that go along with this episode. Uh, so definitely go and check that out. It's $9.99 for the paid subscription. I have new videos on there weekly. We go in more depth with all of these things. As we're building community over there, we're going to be doing more um, group sessions. Uh, so if you've been wanting to work with me at a more uh, affordable price point, $9.99 a month, and we can work right alongside each other. Also, I have a free offering coming up. It'll be very, coming up very soon by the time you're listening to this. There's a free workshop that drops 9-8. Um, and so that's going to be a live workshop. The replay is available. Uh, we're talking all about activating your life force energy. So you can check out more about that uh, right here in the show notes, go over to Substack, check that out. There's so much just beautiful, rich goodness over there. Practices that have radically changed my life and I have no doubt will be incredibly impactful for you as well. Okay. All right. Well, that's it. We did it. All right. Uh, tune out, tune in. Love you, mean it. Time, weather, and... 